Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're doing some iOS game development with a twist. We're going to be using Kimi AI to develop this driving game for iOS. Look at that, it's in 3D. We're driving around the city and we even got collision detection. Now, developing iOS games, they're a bit tricky. They're not as easy as HTML and JavaScript and all that stuff. So we're going to be trying to no code this as hard as possible. Now, in case you don't know, Kimi, they're one of the biggest AI labs in the world. They make the largest open weights model available today, Kimi K2. <laughs> you can just about get it running on a Mac, but we're gonna be using their online platform because I wanna be using their new researcher tab, which gives you advanced searching, researching capabilities to generate documents and the ability to do more advanced stuff for example, this 3D car racing game. So you can use Kimi K2 just straight up out of the box and you can just pretty much just ask it anything. So if I just jump in and I say, I'd like to make a 3D car driving game for iOS using Xcode and Swift. Want to use native libraries, no third party libraries. Graphics should be block based, lighting, shading effects to make it look modern. So as you can see, the version that I made has got nice lighting effects. It spins around and I go ahead and ask it. So you can just use Kimi K2 and it will go ahead and do some searching on the internet and help you find the code to do it. So you can see right here, it did some searching and it's got all of the references on the right for all the websites it searched. So you can go ahead and dig in, find out. And this is just the vanilla Kimi K2, very, very good stuff. And we've got all of the files, look, app.swift, gamescene.swift, all of that stuff ready for you to copy and paste into Xcode. So I'll show you what I developed using just standard Kimi K2. So if I go ahead and run it, it runs on the simulator and look at this. It's got 3D blocks here. It's got some sort of control system. It's got an up and down and it's got some sort of track. The only problem is it doesn't actually do anything. So you hit forward and back and nothing is actually happening. So it's able to do something, but it needs a little bit of more smartness to get the job done. So we're gonna switch over to the researcher function. So the exact same prompt, except we've ticked researcher gonna hit play and it's gonna go come back and ask me some basic questions about what you need to do just to get it done properly. So to provide the most accurate and helpful instructions for creating the 3D driving game, what level of detail you're aiming for. I want cubes and rectangles, but I want the 3D rendered way to look like a Lego movie. So I'll provide detailed instructions, class structures, implementation code to help you build the game from scratch. So it's gonna go ahead and do its thing and it's gonna take a little while. So it's gone ahead and searched for all of these files. So with physics, web Apple developer, GitHub, it's all of these files, it's just search for it. And it's printed out all of this stuff for you to read. Now the good thing about it is it doesn't just print out the stuff in, in code. It gives you an interactive report. So over here, we've got building a 3D block-based car driving game with Swift and SceneKit. So it tells you how to set up the project. So you create a new Xcode project. Maybe we'll go ahead and do this right now, actually. So you want to target appropriate version of iOS. It's giving you some sort of class structure. So we're going to have an SceneKit node, a car route, SCN box. You don't, oh, that's pretty interesting. Look at that. You can zoom in and zoom out, fly around the flow chart. It's gonna tell you how to apply materials for Lego-like appearance, implementing physics, building a block-based city environment, a lot of stuff to read, handling input, setting up the camera, final assembly, the game loop. So we're gonna have generating the city, we're gonna be configuring the camera, setting up the lighting and the game loop. And it's got this a nice presentation that you can read and understand, but I wanna do basic mode. So I'm gonna say, could you provide the source code required for this project? Now, what you need to do is you need to turn off research for this part and just switch to normal Kimi K2. And it will go ahead and take that big report that's been generated by the researcher aspect and now put it into Kimi K2, which we used previously. And we've got that little running demo that didn't really do anything, but now it's got this research report feeding it into Kimi K2 asking it for the class. So it's got appdelicate.swift, scene kit, UI kit, it's got the game controller, scene kit. So here it's got all of the files that you need. So first up is application delegate, game view controller.swift, copy. Paste that in there, city.swift. This is fun. All I'm doing is copy pasting 
hopefully should work. Now we've got a couple of compile errors. Now we're gonna be using Xcode to figure these compile errors out because it says you can just hit the fix button. So I don't really need to involve Kimmy for that. All it is is complaining about you can't assign a uint into int, but we've taken off our programming hat and we're trying to be no programmers, just people that are copy and pasting in this world, vibe coding this situation. So we've got more errors and it's pretty much of the same element. You just need to convert uint into int. Ambiguous use of pi, so it says you can use swift float.py instead. So swift.float. One other thing I noticed is that it's using game view controller, UI view controller, and that's the old way of making apps on iOS. So I'm just gonna ask you actually if it could just send me it in Swift UI, the modern way of doing iOS applications. And there it is, that's the updated code. So app.swift goes in there. So instead of app delegate, it's gonna be app.swift. Gonna delete the storyboard files that we don't use. Delete game view. So I've got that final error. It says self captured by closure before it was initialized. So we paste that, paste that in there and it's got another replacement for this file. Could not find storyboard. That's because I switched from UI view controller. So we go in here, info and main storyboard file name, delete that and run it again. And hopefully we're gonna get something. Boom, look at that. We got something on the screen. There's no controls. The wheels start rolling away, <laughs> but we got something on the screen and potentially we can get it working. So now that we've got something on the screen, we are halfway to our journey. Now I actually did a bit of back and forth with Kimmy just to see if I can fix those issues. But what I ended up doing, I went ahead and started off a new research session. And what I did is I pasted in the files I had and with the bugs I was experiencing. So the car should move with the wheels. You saw that the wheels were just falling off. The camera should follow the car and the car should base move forward. And there you go. I started researching everything, finding out exactly what could be going wrong, presented another document, except this time around it's got code, the specific code that I need to paste in. So this is gameview.swift. Now we've got a bit of errors. It says it's private, the protection level. So I think what that means is we need to get rid of that keyword. So I'll just get rid of that. But it's still the error here. So I'm just gonna ask it to fix it. It's provided the function again, except I'm now I'm asking for minimal code changes. So it says I need to paste that in there. Perfect. Renderer, that needs to be updated to this. <laughs> All right, so after a bit of back and forth with the Kim Meister, uh, we got this going on. It's kind of, it's turned into an airplane. It's turned into an awesome dynamic dissimulation physics of a car just bouncing around it's very very trippy i kind of like it it could be a game in itself but uh maybe it's not as playable as i want it to be but at least we got the controls we've got a gas we've got a brake and it's moving so what i'll do just one more final time is i'm gonna copy and paste the files and just paste it back in and i'm gonna say when the game starts, the car's floating in the air and lands and bounces around. Just want to have to have it start on the ground. So it's giving me the changes that it still thinks to do. So I'm just having a bit more back and forth, see if I can get it fixed. So after a bit more back and forth, I told it to rip out the scene kit physics stuff and just do some basic physics. And there you go. We got some sort of simulation, except there is no collision detection right now. I'm gonna ask it how to add basic collision detection so I can go through the objects. So it says, so in car.swift, I need to add wood collide. And in apply control, I need to compute the desired location and then ask wood collide before actually applying that movement. So I can see that this is where the movement gets applied. So it says, I just do this instead, paste it in there. We've got it calling the wood collide function, hit a bit of gas, and now it's just permanently stuck, so it's not moving. So I think it's colliding with the floor. So let's just ask it, and it says, yes, the ground box is huge. Skip the flat ground, use this function. Bit of back and forth here, keep the height, bit of back and forth. And it's told me, it's told me here, interestingly, to print out to print out some logs, which will appear in this section here and to tell it the results. So I did that. 
printed out some logs, really long logs. And from that repetitive log, the really long one, it says just replace the loop with this. So let's just see if that runs and boom. Okay, we kind of spawned in an inappropriate location, but hopefully it'll work. Oh yeah, there you go. I've maneuvered my way out. Boom, we got collisions, got a bit of rotations. It's moving. And as you can see, it's got nice shadows. So we got lighting, we got shadows and we got movement so you could run there. So there you go, we got it running, we got a bit of collision detection, got a bit of movement, and you can kind of just like work away with your friend to see if you can figure out what else to do in this world. For example, maybe you want to have like a introduction new game screen or a respawn screen, screen or just having a bit of like audio UI. You can ask it how to do that and hopefully you'll get the solution. So what do you guys think of this coding adventure where we managed to completely from scratch using AI, we're using Kimi Researcher, we're using Kimi K2, all in one package, we built an Xcode project, runs on an iPad, and it's 3D, so it's a bit of an advanced situation over there. What do you guys think? Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show.